Okay, so today we're doing something new. Uh, Har is uh, working on collecting leaf samples for leaf tissue analysis. So he can tell you all about how to do that. And the reason for doing that is to decide what fertilizers we may need to apply to correct any deficiencies and get better production and more hardiness against diseases. So the instructions are to take the third or fourth leaf down from the tip. That's a general instruction with these mangoes that have a bunch of leaves right near the tip. I am getting a leaf just below that group of leaves at the tip. So how many leaves are you going to get for a sample? The lab instructions say enough to wad up that would be the size of a softball. So it's quite a few leaves. They will prefer that the leaves be off several trees. So right now you're working on carry. Yes. I collected from Popucalai or lemon ring trees and now from carry trees. They test for a whole lot of things. They have that basic test and then uh, more detailed tests after our options after that. So, uh, yes, well. the other tests are not redundant with a basic test, they, they test for extra elements or elements in different molecules, different availability. What we've supplemented with in the past is gypsum for calcium and uh, that's based on our soil type and just the general feeling that the, uh, the mangoes could benefit from the calcium. Yes, gypsum is calcium sulfate. That has the advantage over lime of not changing the pH of the soil. Lime makes the soil more alkaline, raises the pH. But uh, gypsum, which is half sulfur, which lowers pH, and half calcium, which raises pH. Uh, so they cancel each other out. Yes. So have you ever seen deficiencies on one side of the tree but not on another? Yes, and by going around several trees, we're looking for an average. Obviously, if lab tests were cheaper, one would do a whole bunch of individual samples instead of a big average. But in our case, in this case here, we have very similar growing conditions, very similar soils. So it seems that we'll get very useful results from this. And in organic production, there's an extra emphasis more than in agriculture in general on soil and tissue testing so that one doesn't put out any fertilizer without a proven need. They 
don't want any real old ugly leaves or any tender new growth. What recently matured healthy leaves unless one is trying to analyze a disease condition or an obvious deficiency. Definitely be a wad at least as big as a softball. And when I finish out here in the field, I will have to rinse all of these with distilled water and then spread them out to dry on a cloth or plastic in the shade before putting them in a paper bag to send to the lab. Don't want any molds <laughs> right. forming. Or stinky wet rot by the time it gets there. They don't want that. So. Car for short for carry. So, so here's our lucky winner. So one tree that we're going to do a single tree sample on. It's a kit tree that didn't produce any fruit this year and has had some issues with sooty mold mostly in the past. Uh, so we'll see if there's anything nutritionally going on here. It's a completely different area of the grove than the uh, samples of the Popuclae and and carry that are just collected. This growth is looking pretty darn healthy at the moment. Which it didn't last year. You can see that it's actually beneficial for trees to once in a while not produce and make a nice new cover of leaves. Mango leaves can last for several years and Kit does have the tendency of spending more of its energy producing and very, I mean producing fruits, heavy crop, and doesn't make enough new leaves. So the tree does get run down and a year's rest does it a lot of good. It's very rare for a kit to have a year's rest though. But three of them rested this year so in this grove. So we've decided to do uh, lychee also. Got a lot of lychee trees and even though it's the production has been heavily influenced by the weather, as in it's not been cold enough to produce for many years, produce significantly, 
want to make sure that the trees are not deficient in some way in case we should happen to get a crop next year. So I'm trying to avoid the ones with big new growth. Most of these have buds breaking. That will influence the mineral content some, but I don't see enough branches that aren't breaking out in the buds. I say it will in influence the mineral content because some minerals are mobile in the plant, and the plant will pull what it needs for the new growth out of the older growth. Letting the, the babies eat first. That's right. Whenever they, this lab does leaf tissue analysis, it's important to have a soil sample that goes along with it. Make sure there's no debris, and certainly if, if you sample a field that's been fertilized, if you see any granules of fertilizer, you would scrape those off before taking the sample. And they do ask that the shovel be clean and that you use a plastic bucket. There's a whole lot of organic matter in this one. I wonder what got buried here. Yeah, we, we used a ton of, of mulch many years ago. I so. think I'll skip that. It uh, looks rather heavy over in this direction, too. So. This spot has some visible shell. Hit something. Sounds like a rock. Yes, we'll have to pick out all the rocks. Any leaves, rocks, or roots we need to pick out before we send the sample in. It looks like it's going to be high in organic matter, too. Earlier this afternoon, Har. Uh, took uh, a wire brush to the shovel and uh, brushed it very well and then washed it so it, the whatever rust would not contaminate the sample. Yes, and one must never use any galvanized equipment or galvanized pails because enough zinc can come off of that to make it look as though your soil has enough zinc in it. The soil here is a lot different from just over it and 15 feet away. Yeah, okay, let's get more further over. And 
by no means all of this soil is going to the lab. One just picks out the debris and then one has to mix it thoroughly. So basically just getting all the rocks and roots out of this, right? Yes. Won't be all of them, just the big pieces. Now they don't say to sieve the sample. If the lab wants to sieve the sample, it can do it at the lab. Any lab has several different sieves. And how long is this going to take to get the results back? Well, they email the results back. So, I would suspect that once they receive the sample, they can be sending the results out in a day or two. So I'm assuming you just send it off in a USPS flat rate box? That's the plan. Mark that it's sand and not leaves. Sample site. Yeah. And if we had taken more than one sample, then we would number the sample or describe the field it's from or whatever. That's probably twice as much as what they need. Okay, sounds so good. So now I need to go home and rinse those leaves in distilled water and spread them out in the shade to dry and then package them up for mailing.